So what do you guys see? The, what is the relationship between these two insects? This one and this one. Well, autopod predators such as this digger, WAPS, okay, helps to keep an important balance among Earth's invertebrates. The digger wraps has captured a meal, not for itself, but for its young. Right here, it is not capturing the food for itself, but it's capturing for its uh, offsprings. Now the wraps will deposit the leaf, but paralyze grasshopper, but into a burrow she has constructed. She will lay a single egg next to the grasshopper so when the egg hatches the larva will have a fresh meal so this is how this two relation this relationship between two objects uh, two insects actually works out so they this is based for this this wasps is digger wasps is a predator for itself but this because it, it's uh, its offspring needs food to survive it has to ha have to um, eat this people arthropods okay so this is how the relationship between these two insects actually work out hi I'm Karan in this video we'll be talking about anthropic diversity and uh, at some uh, some point in your life you would have to say earth is ruled by bug-eyed monster because every time you see whenever you go around whether you're scared of in, uh, uh, bugs or not. Every time you go to forest or anything, you keep seeing bugs all around you. So you, at least at some point, you have to end up with the conclusion that the earth is being ruled by uh, bug-eyed monsters, right? So did you guys know that, that more than three-fourths of all known animals, that is more than one million species, are anthropods? So now since there are many anthropods, they play an important role in every ecosystem on the planet. So now since there are many anthropods in our every ecosystem, where, and like I told you, everywhere you go, you see bugs around all around you. So before we actually start uh, talking about its diversity, in which we'll talk about its, uh, uh, its characteristics and its whole uh, about the body parts and anatomy let's go ahead and know what arthropod is now even though you guys don't uh, even without knowing what anthropods are we as a human beings interact with it every day we when we walk through the carpet we interact with them now basically an arthropod is basically arthropod is basically an Invertebrate animal, which basically is animal without backbone, with an exoskeleton, made of of sitting, which is basically a series. Of pain jointed appendices and segments, segmented body. Now there's so many things going on over here. Now since there's so many things going on here, I would like to underline some of these things that we'll talk about um, about anthropods and in these things such as exoskeleton, which plays an important role, and you see why. Cheating. Then they will talk also about the appendages and the segment body parts. So. What I want you guys to do now, before in what, uh, where we are talking about anthropod characteristics, now before we move on to the video, the entire surface of an anthropod body is covered by protective uh, exoskeleton. Okay, so exoskeleton, what it does is basically it's a key structure to them. It it basically 
does a lot of things to them. So when we move on to the video, I want you guys to pay attention to the video. So let's go ahead and go on to the video. Okay, so like we talked about exoskeleton, kitten, appendage, uh, and segmentation. Let's go ahead and talk about them in briefly while taking an example. So basically an exoskeleton is an external skeleton, like it says, that supports the animal tissue against gravity while in arthropods, such as the rhinobiddle that I've sh uh, that is shown in, the f in this figure, has an uh, exoskeleton that is made up of protein and uh, ch uh, kitten. Okay, now kitten is basically a long organic molecule made up of sugars. Now, similar to plant uh, cellulose that is arranged in layers, in each layers, fibers are laid out parallel to one another, but fibers in different layer points in different direction, forming a biological plywood, uh, is very tough and strong. So, you can compare the uh, kitten to like an armor, it protects the, the whole, even though it's made up of uh, sugars, organic molecules, it does, uh, it can pretty much protect a, a beetle or an uh, anthropod just like uh, an armor that protects a knight. So, joint uh, append uh, appendages were, in, uh, were an important adaptation for during the evolution of arthropod, okay? And appendage is basically, if you don't know that, it's an extensive of an organism body. Now, it can basically be used for walking, like it's walking, swimming, sensing, manipulating food, or chewing. So, it's basically, you can uh, count them as a senses. So, since, like, we have senses, they want to have senses as well, right? Even though walking, swimming, and uh, other things are involved, you can just remember this appendage by senses. So, other pods basically have six, eight, ten, or even hundreds of appendages. Okay, now appendages can be shaped like rakes, tweakers, nutcrackers, hammers, or paddles. Now, this this uh, insect, which is an uh, arthropod, have basically incredible, incredible variety of body forms. Now, some of microscopic, uh, some are microscopic, but while others are quite large. For example, let's say apart from this example, let's say some tropical stick insect and millipedes can reach up to uh, one feet in length and spider crabs can have arm span to about 12 feet but all arthropod bodies are segmented for a specific function so what is a segmentation well segmentation is nothing but it's basically describes how an arthropod body parts are divided into similar sections uh, that have each involved for a different function so First, the legs, let's say first the leg used to be used for swimming. Now, since it's involved, now it can be also used as for walking, right? So, this is a segmentation of uh, arthropod body parts. Now, this example over here is basically one of, um, one of the examples that we used uh, for the rhino beetle. This is the rhino beetle and it's an arthropod. So, uh, even though arthropod consists of many animals, I've taken this rhino beetle to use this as an example and explain you about these concepts. Okay, so after what we talked about, about anthropod's uh, characteristics, now we'll go ahead and talk about the whole structure, what does the anthropod contain. And basically, our main focus will be on exoskeleton. Okay, and we'll also talk about the benefits of exoskeleton. So let's go ahead and start off uh, uh, giving the points which are important in anthropod. So basically, every anthropod did you see? Every anthropod do you, that you see, all of them, all have exoskeleton. Okay, so basically the reason because is that its structures, ba the structure basically determines, let me just write it down, the structure determines how it can live. So this exoskeleton as you guys can see 
by by s making this point, you see how much important uh, exoskeleton is to them. Now, many people get confused by chitin is is it's basically not a living tissue. Okay, so uh, and like it's like having a living body crammed into a hard exoskeleton. It's like similar to let's say for example, it's like how to a mentally knight would wear a suit of armor. You see, whenever you see a knight wearing an armor, it's like so much they have so much protection for themselves when they're off to fighting, right? So an exoskeleton that contains uh uh, that has chitin in themselves basically does not mean let me go ahead and write it with red okay so this is does not mean it has uh, living tissue okay so many many people get confused on it so this is the point that I was making across that this th uh, chin is basically not a living tissue but it's like a uh, hot, hot cramped in, uh, it's the chitin is basically cramped into the exoskeleton making it strong and protective okay so it's like what whenever they are getting hurt it is the only one that protects themselves okay so if, if it's like saying yeah, if a knight doesn't have armor, he would have less protection than those uh, knights who has armor. Same with this thing over here. You can compare the say, examples with each other and see how it actually works. Okay. Now there are benefits of exoskeleton that we also that we'll also talk about. So let's go ahead and talk about the benefits of exo exoskeleton. So benefits of exoskeleton so what are the benefits of ex exoskeleton well the first thing is that it, it helps in movements second is basically the growth and third and foremost is the maintenance Maintaining, let me just write maintaining. Internal and external. Oops. Man maintaining internal and external equilibrium. Okay, so. These are the three main points that we'll focus on in our later video, okay? So, I want you guys to understand the basic benefits of exoskeleton. This is the reason why I just presented you the three benefits of it. Now, the important question is that we will talk about the, its movements, okay? We will talk about its movements and the maintenance of equilibrium, but we don't want to actually talk about the growth because growth is like saying well, it's just an uh, example of human being. Uh, we don't actually talk about growth. It just happens be, uh, because of years, time, uh, because of time intervals. We just grow up uh, eventually. But movements, how, are we, how do we actually move? That's the main focus. Then how do, we, how do they, the arthropod, maintain the internal and external equilibrium? Now, equilibrium basically means uh, at the same rate. Okay? And that's what it basically means. So let's go ahead and talk about the movements and maintaining internal and external equilibrium. Now, as you guys have noticed, you can you could uh, you just saw a picture over here uh, of what we just talked about. So this is how you can relate an anthropod's exoskeleton and see how how much how is it related. Uh, basically, it's a structure that determines how it lives. And it's not uh, the cheating inside the exoskeleton is not a living tissue and so on and so forth so let's go ahead and elaborate on this uh, two points even though there's three growth is uh, happening eventually so we don't want to talk about that but those are the benefits of it of course so let's go ahead and talk about movements and maintenance of internal and external 
equilibrium. Okay, so here we'll be talking about the movement and growth that we uh, that we know a little bit about, and here we're basically extending the whole idea of exoskeleton. So there's two type of cutoff plates that assist in movement. Now stiff plate, uh, stiff cutoff plates of ex uh, exoskeleton are separated by sections of more flexible cutoff that forms joints in the hard armor. So when a muscle is stretching across exoskeleton joints, they contract, they bend the joint so the arthropod can basically move. Now the cutoff supporting arthropod legs attacks as a spring. So what happens is if, if uh, efficiently storing and releasing energy as the animal moves okay so, uh, and now this is the whole th idea about the movement so it, like we said exoskeleton helps the arthropod move their body now uh, we'll be talking about the molding now arthropod cuddle cannot grow along with the animal so the arthropod also an arthropod must shield its exoskeleton in process called molding now this process of shell, uh, shitting and reforming a new exoskeleton is in this figure right here. Okay, so the first, this is what happens first. So the first, uh, under the old exoskeleton fluids are secreted that will form the new exoskeleton. Secondly, what happens is that the insect sheets uh, the old exoskeleton in process uh, called ECDs. And the finally, the third stage and the final would be the once the arthropod calls out of the old exoskeleton, the new exoskeleton will bring the begin to harden. Now, so you see, the whole idea to prove this point is that uh, depending upon what exoskeleton they are having, that's how they are able to move. You see, over here, they're just able to form new skeleton. After forming that, they can actually walk and here they can walk and crawl. You see, this is the latest, this is like a, uh, you can think it of a uh, professional, uh, you can think it of as, as you level up some uh, game or something, you earn achievement. So it's an achievement as it goes on uh, throughout, his, uh, throughout the arthropod's lifetime. It gains and gains a thing that helps it, uh, its movement and growth. So this is how movement and growth are basically related to each other and this is the whole point of movement and growth um, and the growth is basically this whole process is known as molting. So here we'll be talking about managing how an anthropod basically manages in its internal and external functions. So first we'll talk about the uh, circulation and how it happens and then we'll move on to the senses of arthropod okay so the circulation basically what happens is the arthropod have an open circulatory system in which blood is pumped through a tube like heart and out of the uh, into uh, the body cavity so in comparison the vertebrates that have the backbone have a closed circulatory system such as humans that we are vertebrates so in which blood is contained inside a system of arteries, veins, capillaries with a, and a heart. So in an open circulatory system which are of uh, invertebrate animals or the arthropod, what happens is that the blood is pumped out through the heart into and into the body where it comes in direct contact with organism and tissue. So the stiff exoskeleton of arthropod basically helps control blood pressure. And because exoskeleton does not change shape when the heart pumps blood out into the body, the exoskeleton keeps the blood con uh, contained while body movements keep it circulatory. So this is the whole thing about the uh, circulation, how the how exoskeleton can also maintain the blood's uh, blood pressure and even though the arthropod is moving. Now senses. Now most arthropod sensory organ, uh, organs, including antenna right here as you guys can see, and you have seen this in mo many animals, antenna is basically uh, usually in sense because they're made up of modified cuddles. Now hard cuddle would otherwise block uh, environmental stimuli. Now stimuli is something that you would react in a, uh, in a uh, reaction. Okay, so stimuli would be in, uh, if I if I tickled you, you would start giggling. So that would be a giggling would be a stimuli. 
Okay, now uh, going back to arthropods, the antenna and the body hair right here, the body hair right here, and the antenna right here, okay, ha allow an anthropod to s uh, sense its surrounding environment, including temperature, touch, sound, and smell. So most arthropods have, have a compound eyes, unlike those mammalian eyes, which have only single lens that collects all visual information. Arthropod eyes have thousands of tiny individual lenses that interpret only a small portion of field of view. Now this image that I've shown you in the figure gives you guys an idea on how many individual eyes form a, a single compound uh, eye. So when all this living, uh, when all these individual images come together, they form rough mosaic of an object that resembles a newspaper or magazine image.